everybody. How's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Uh, starting off over at Bloomberg, Google, uh, Google's Nest is going to buy a security startup drop cam for $555 million. That's right. Uh, Nest Labs is acquiring drop cam incorporated for $555 million to boost its offerings for the connected home. The deal will be in cash and subject to adjustments. Nest said in a statement yesterday, drop cam makes in-home cameras that can be checked from a smartphone anywhere in the world an offering that would broaden Nest's product lineup into home security. So Nest sells digital thermostats and smoke alarms that can also be checked and adjusted remotely from mobile gadgets. So it's I'm curious uh, what they're going to do with Dropcam, but it should be pretty interesting. Um, you know, you never know uh, what's going to happen, uh, you know, in the tech space, especially when you have a company like Nest buying drop cam. I mean, we can all, you know, ha have some conjecture about what may be the motivations and what the, you know, the projected outcome may be. But the reality of the matter is we don't really know. So it'll be interesting to see um, what happens. From uh, techtimes.com, Project Livewire, Harley Davidson stuns fans with a new electric motorcycle. That is correct. Harley Davidson showed off a new concept motorcycle Thursday that replaced the company's signature V-twin engine with an electric motor. The bike is called Project Livewire and is the first move by a major motorcycle manufacturer in, into the area of electric vehicles. Uh, Livewire was designed to show off Harley-Davidson's electric bike design, gauging customer reactions and introducing the idea of an electric Harley to the public. To this end, Livewire will be touring across the U.S. along Route 66 later this year, visiting more than 30 Harley-Davidson dealerships and giving customers a chance to try out the bike. So pretty cool. Harley-Davidson uh, is one of those companies that, you know, you would think that they, you know, would never adopt electric. I mean, they're kind of old school. They've been around for a really long time. You know, gas motorcycles, the, you know, the that's kind of their thing. And uh, it turns out that... Um, uh, that uh, that's not necessarily the case. They they very well may be uh, uh, you know embracing modern times, if you will. From uh, the Wall Street Journal, Legos Evolution will be digitized. Devoted Lego fans may be a wildly creative bunch, but there's one thing even they can't do: magically transport real plastic brick creations into the virtual world. Over the past few years, Legos, Lego has tried to bridge this digital divide by filling Apple's App Store and Google Play Store with brick-themed games and activities for the younger set, but Lego's upcoming Fusion platform will soon let the little builders capture the likeness of their structures for touchscreen interaction. This is actually pretty cool. So uh, basically the idea is simple. You build something using the special platform and bricks included with the Lego Fusion set, then you launch the free app on your Android or iOS device, take a picture of it, and then watch as it gets sucked into one of four virtual worlds on your smartphone or tablet. It's aimed at 7 to 12-year-olds, and, you know, like me, as you can probably see, I have a giant collection of unbuilt Lego sets. Look at that. We'll go ahead and change the focus. Got one here, too. Uh, you know, un very much like me, uh, and my kids are totally into Legos, and so am I. <laughs> I don't know if that's such a good thing, but uh, you know, I'm I'm actually looking forward to uh, checking this out. This this sounds pretty cool. So uh, I'll be uh, checking this out. This may be the topic of a of a future uh, video episode. Um, so should be pretty interesting. 
from ZDNet, Amazon's Fire, Amazon's Fire Phones, big hurdle, the learning curve. So for every one of you who have been living under a rock and only pay attention to my show, uh, Amazon has announced a new phone, the Fire Phone. It kind of goes along with the Fire TV and uh, their, their Amazon Fire tablet, Kindle Fire uh, tablet. Uh, so they have a new Fire Phone. Um, this article, I've got a couple articles here that I want to point you guys to. This one is pointing out some of the challenges that you may have uh, learning how to use this new phone because it has a new user interface that's kind of this weird three-dimensional thing. I, you know, I, looking at it, I'm like, that looks cool, but I, 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 I struggle to... One of the, I have an iPhone, uh, and when Apple released iOS 7, um, one of the things that I really struggled with was, was uh, the, uh, the weird perspective shift thing that they had going on with the iPhone 7. I really struggled with that, and that was one of the first things I shut off on the phone. I was like, you know what? You know, <laughs> I don't need my screen doing weird stuff. I'm, I'm trying to use it. So I'm curious, um, I'm curious as to how Apple, or not Apple, how Amazon is going to, you know, how, how useful it really is. So I'll be looking forward to, um, uh, I'll be looking forward to, to getting uh, this, at least checking it out. Uh, you know, I need to figure out how I can check it out uh, without actually buying the phone. So it uh, should be pretty interesting. Um Man, I have just got ad laden today. Uh, from PCMagazine.com, Amazon Fire Phone versus Samsung Galaxy S5 specs compared. So again, the Amazon Fire Phone is an Android-based phone, so it's very much in league with the uh, Galaxy S5 from Samsung. Uh, the story starts off, Amazon is jumping into the smartphone game with the Fire Phone. It's a natural progression from the Kindle Fire and the Fire TV media streamer. And Amazon is taking aim squarely at other companies' flagship smartphones. Samsung's own flagship, the Galaxy S5, which goes for $99 over at Amazon, stands at the top of the smartphone heap for most carriers. Let's see how they compare. So then it goes and does, does a run through. There are a lot of similarities. For example, they're both Android. They both have giant screens. Uh, they both uh, run Android... Uh, uh, th yeah, they both run Android. The uh, Samsung S5 has 4.4.2 KitKat, while the Fire Phone uses Amazon's highly modified version of Android, their Fire OS. Uh, Fire OS 3.5's big friendly tiles and icons look closer to iOS than Android, um, which is appropriate considering how much the Fire Phone resembles the iPhone 5S. And I, I actually have a 5S right here, so if you didn't know any better, you would probably think that, uh, let me pull focus, you would probably think that uh, you are looking at, uh, you know, an, an Amazon Fire phone. And the reality is you're, you're not. You're, you're looking at Fire phone or an iPhone 5S. So should be pretty interesting uh, to see how this goes out. The article runs down, gives a whole bunch of other technical stuff and that sort of thing. So it should be, um, you know, comparisons between the two phones. It turns out they're very similar. They have a lot of things that are in common. And, you know, again, flagship phones tend to have that. They tend to be kind of at the top of the top of the bar when it comes to that sort of thing. So it should be pretty interesting. From spaceflightnow.com, uh, the delay stricken SpaceX launch scrubbed by a technical issue. Uh, SpaceX called off the launch of a Falcon 9 rocket Friday after detecting an unexpected pressurization signature on the launcher's second stage. Uh, officials said the launch team detected a drop in pressure on the rocket's second stage shortly before beginning the terminal countdown for liftoff at 6.08 p.m., the launch crew spent nearly an hour evaluating the problem, aiming to be ready for liftoff by the end of Friday's launch window at 7.01 p.m. It was not clear whether the issue was on the launcher or ground systems, and engineers studying the problem ultimately called an abort T-7 minutes, 50 seconds. This is stage two. We are abort, 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 said a member of the SpaceX launch team. So, kind of interesting. Uh, 
I'm curious to see what caused that. Um, should be pretty interesting. Hopefully, you know, they, they uh, do figure out what the issue is so that they can continue on. Uh, from Mashable.com, Microsoft inadvertently confirms the Microsoft Surface Mini. What? Yeah, that's right. They've got a Mini coming out. Uh, when Microsoft unveiled the Surface Pro 3 in May, most people are expecting a Surface Mini. A small screen Windows tablet aimed to go head-to-head -head with competitors like the iPad Mini and the Nexus 7. Well, that didn't happen. Now, it appears that is what Microsoft was planning too. A user manual for the Surface Pro 3, available on Microsoft's website, makes multiple references to a Surface Mini, first noticed by Paul Thoreau and reported by The Verge. The name appears in exactly four places, apparently by accident, possibly via some careless copying and pasting. One of them even suggests the Surface Mini would have come with a digital pen, just as the Pro model does. You'll pair your new pen with the Surface Mini a little later during setup. So, interestingly, I'm a huge fan of using my fingers and on my phone. Again, I'm a huge fan of using my fingers. A stylus makes absolutely no sense on a phone. Uh, however, I also use an iPad, and if you haven't noticed, um, I use a stylus. This one is from Griffin, um, and it just makes it a lot easier when you're using it. Instead of use, I can still use my finger, but I get a lot more precision than my, my fat, pudgy fingers using a, a stylus, particularly when I'm dealing with things that are relatively small on the screen. It's a lot easier to select them with a stylus. So anyway, uh, for tablets, I can totally see styluses being normal uh, in addition to fingers for more gross motor type movements. But uh, for phones, you know, styluses are still pretty much useless. All right, that will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. If you're watching this on YouTube or any of the other uh, video sharing sites, please subscribe. And uh, for those of you who have, thank you so much for supporting the show by subscribing. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye. Thank you.